Hello everyone, it's Judy and I'm here at Janice Floral and this is Migration Madness Week, the spring version. We did one in the fall and now it's time to do one in the spring because the migrating birds are beginning to return. And so today I wanted to talk about hummingbirds a little bit because they are just to the south of us. I went on to this particular website and if Mackenzie, if you can focus in on that, it's called hummingbirdcentral.com and you can go to that website and there is a map and on that map people will go on and they will show you or tell, report when they've seen a hummingbird. And so I checked that map this morning and obviously with the warmer weather they're a little farther north than normal. I think last year there wasn't one spotted in Ohio until like the 11th of April. Well, I've already noticed that there have been, there's been at least one spotted, but I think this map might be in two locations. And there's been one sighted uh, a little bit south of Columbus and then actually one in Columbus on the third. So that means that they are definitely on their way. And there were lots in Tennessee and in, um, in Kentucky. And so soon they will be arriving. And with the weather that we're having, there's nothing to really keep them from continuing to progress. So uh, they'll be here within the week, I would say. So I would encourage you to get those feeders out. And so that's why we're focusing on hummingbirds today. So get them out. Maybe you have one that looks like this or something similar. I would encourage you not to fill it all the way up, but only fill it halfway, whatever feeder you're using, whether it's one like this, or more of a flat version like this, um, don't fill them all the way up because the hummingbirds, they're not gonna be coming to drink all of that, so you don't wanna waste it, but fill them halfway up and then um, see what happens. You may be seeing some within a week or 10 days, but obviously with the weather we're having, you don't wanna leave that same nectar out for much more than three or four days because then it will get moldy and if a hummingbird does come, it could make them sick, but also they're not going to return to that feeder uh, again. So unless, of course, you move it. So make sure that you only fill it halfway. Don't keep it out longer than three or four days. Make sure to change it and clean your feeder. So those are my first really important tips. Then the next thing I would say is if you don't have a feeder, um, we have several here to choose from, and I'm just going to give you some things to think about. So this one here is Dr. JB's. It's probably our most popular feeder. It's easy to take apart, uh, easy to fill. It's a wide mouth. It pops apart so that you can put it in the dishwasher. Um, so really easy to clean and to get apart. The thing that's really important about it is that it doesn't leak. So leaking is what attracts bees. And if you, when you're thinking about a new feeder, th try to think, find one that doesn't leak. That will help you, uh, especially later on in the summer when yellow jackets are prolific. Um, hummingbirds, or uh, not hummingbirds, but uh, honeybees would probably be attracted to them too. But I think yellow jackets tend to be the biggest issue uh, and wasps and a feeder that doesn't leak will help prevent or deter them from getting in your feeder. So this is one that doesn't leak. Typically the ones that are like this don't leak. Um, so they're not gonna be quite as attractive uh, a, to a hummingbird or to a, you want them to be attractive to a hummingbird, <laughs> but I mean to a bee or a wasp. Um, if you need something that's a little bigger, so this is a Dr. JB's too, but it holds more. So that was a 16 ounce. This is a 32 ounce. So twice as big as the other one. So that is a good option if you need something a little bit bigger. But if you don't have a lot of hummingbirds, then you don't really need something that big just because the, the nectar will go bad before you'll ever work your, they'll eat it all. So, or drink it all. Um, so nectar, uh, you can use sugar water, of course, and it's a four to one ratio, or you can use a mix. Um, if you want something a little simpler, we have these mixes here. 
So that would take care of nectar. This is another flat feeder, and it's a little bit bigger. I don't know if I can open it. It's very similar to the other one that I showed you. Um, it has a uh, ant moat, and then this one holds uh, 16 ounces. The other one I pulled up only holds 12 ounces, so it's just a little bit bigger. This one, again, is resistant uh, to bees, and, and because of its solid red color, you don't have to worry about making that nectar red. And I don't think you have to make it red anyway, but uh, this one, it appears red. So with the whole feeder being red, that would be attractive to the hummers, which is kind of nice. So speaking of red nectar, we will get some nectar in that's red, but it's made red by um, shavings actually from beetles. So that's what gives it its red color. You do not want to buy uh, nectar at the store that has red food dye in it. That is really bad for the hummers and actually can lead to their death if they have too much of it. So do not use uh, nectar with red dye. All right, so the other thing I wanted to mention is an ant moat and probably one of the simplest tips and simplest little thing that you can buy. It's only $6.99. This one is a nice size because the water won't evaporate it from it as quickly. And then you hang your feeder from it. So if you were using the strawberry feeder, you would hang it right from the ant moat. You'd fill this with water and then the ants come up your shepherd's hook, hit the water, and then they can't get to the feeder itself. And once you get ants in the feeder, one, it's just messy for you to have to clean up, but two, the hummers aren't gonna be as attracted to it. So you wanna try to keep those ants out of that feeder. And the easiest way, yes, you can grease a pole. That's kind of a pain, <laughs> but I know lots of you do it. Um, and there are other things that you can do, but this simple uh, little device with water in it will take care of your problem really quickly. Um, so that is those things. Then I wanted to mention the brushes. Um, I know there's another type of brush here, but this is a brush to help clean your feeder. And then this one feeder actually comes, I think I have more brushes. Oh, there it is. Um, this is a little brush that you can use to clean your holes. And that's where mold can tend to really grow. So if you have a little tiny brush like this, you can really get in there and get that mold off to help keep the feeder clean. Um, so I think that about covers it. We're, I, this is the day I'm focusing on hummingbird feeders and the fact that you need to get them out. On another day this week, we'll probably look at some plants because we've already gotten some plants in that hummers would like. And that's a really important thing to think about. When Jason Larson comes from the Gorman Nature Center, here in a couple weeks on the 22nd, he is going to talk about how important your habitat is. If all you're doing is hanging a feeder and you don't really have anything else in your yard that hummingbirds would be attracted to, it's going to be really hard to just get them to your feeder. So habitat's really important. So another day this week during our Madness Week, I'll show you some hummingbird plants that we've already received in and actually some are blooming and so the hummers would really like that. So that gives you some thoughts about hummingbirds. Um, any questions that have come through? No? Okay, great. All right. So if you have a question, feel free to put it in the comments, and we will uh, do our best to answer that. Tomorrow in our Migration Madness, we're going to talk about Orioles and have already started getting lots of questions about Orioles, and so we'll try to answer a few of those in our daily dive tomorrow. So thanks so much for tuning in and we hope to see you soon. Just a couple reminders. Uh, we are open Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, 9 to 5, Saturday, 9 to 3. Um, our address is 4153 Park Avenue West. So we're just past the roadhouse on uh, Park Avenue, a quarter mile on the left. And then the last thing I wanted to remind you of, it is almost time to plant uh, vegetables and all those kinds of things. And while we don't have vegetables in yet, they will be coming in the next couple weeks. 
And this particular week, we're getting small little tastes of plants every day. And so we didn't get some today, but we will be getting some tomorrow, and then there'll be some more on Thursday. And so it's just kind of fun as we go through each week to see what else is coming. And so we'll try to show you some of that as we go along. And then on Wednesday, I am actually making a trip to Michigan for some plants. And so I, while I don't always do a daily dive, I'm going to try to do a short one while I'm in Michigan so you can see what I'm bringing back from there. So um, uh, just exciting times ahead. And again, we look forward to serving you and hope to see you soon. Have a great day. Bye.